I want to uh, talk about actually aging and the role of telomere biology in, in aging and age-related diseases and how it may be able to help improve one's health. Uh, just <coughs> by way of uh, interest, can people put up their hand if they know about telomeres and aging? <coughs> Okay, some do, some don't, and uh, I will be doing a bit of an introduction on that. Okay, so <clears throat> I think uh, we all recognize that uh, life when you're healthy is great. As you get older, especially with chronic diseases that persist sometimes for uh, decades, life can be not so great when, uh, as you um, move to advanced ages. So I'm going to describe a little bit about how monitoring telomere length may be able to motivate people to maintain a healthy life spot, lifestyle and helpfully increase health span. So what are telomeres? They are unique uh, complexes at the end of the chromosome that, that cap chromosome ends, protecting them from abnormal recombination. Uh, they enable proper cell division. If a telomere is missing, it can trigger uh, dicentric chromosome formation and breakage bridge fusion cycles leading to genomic instability. Uh, the length of the telomere is a marker of replicative capacity of cells, so the longer the telomeres are in a cell, the more times it can divide normally. Uh, and because of the end replication problem, uh, in general, telomeres shorten with age. Uh, and the, the way telomeres are maintained, for example, in certain stem cell populations and in cancer is through an enzyme telomerase that's capable of de novo synthesis of telomeric DNA. So when you have critically short telomeres, uh, this triggers DNA damage and chromosome instability, uh, cellular aging or senescence and apoptosis, uh, loss of regenerative capacity in the stem cell compartments, and that ultimately leads to loss of cell and tissue function, and it can even contribute to tumor initiation. So uh, telomere length measurement is a unique biomarker. It quantifies a root cause of aging and disease, and it integrates uh, basically the telomere length you were born with and lifelong factors that modify telomere length or modulate telomerase activity uh, over the decades. Uh, so at birth, uh, your telomere length is about 70% inherited from the length of the telomeres in your mother and father. But over time, environment and lifestyle uh, dominate the variation in telomere length. Uh, so it, uh, short telomeres can pre predict reduced replicative capacity, re reduced regenerative capacity. Uh, conversely, lifestyle factors, whether it's diet or exercise or stress, uh, many factors can accelerate the loss of telomeric DNA, like inflammation, oxidative damage, uh, chronic infections, particularly viral infections. Uh, mental stress and a variety of lifestyle factors. So we look at short telomeres as sort of a check engine light. You, it doesn't uh, generate a specific diagnostic prediction, but it would indicate that there's uh, potentially accelerated aging in certain uh, uh, tissues, and this could be a risk factor for mortality or, or disease. Uh, unlike the rest of the, uh, most of the rest of the genome, telomeres are actually changeable because of the enzyme telomerase, which can be activated and lengthen telomeres. And we know that exercise, diet, stress reduction, and a variety of other factors are associated with either longer or shorter telomeres. Uh, generally, unhealthy lifestyles are associated with shorter telomeres. And uh, there has been, in some randomized controlled studies, evidence that specific dietary supplements, for example, can actually lengthen telomeres. So there are a number of controlled intervention studies underway, and we expect that exercise as well may lengthen telomeres. So uh, there have been many different studies in the interest of time. I won't go through the details here, but a lot of prospective studies have collected telomere length at baseline in the study, and then uh, subjects are followed over 10 or sometimes 20 years. And you can look at the hazard or uh, odds ratios in case controls to uh, determine whether or not short telomeres are associated with um, disease, out with uh, clinical outcomes. And I'll just uh, show a number of slides here. They all look similar, where the 33 percent of indiv individuals in the, uh, with longest telomere length, that's the upper tertile, is the bottom curve on all of these graphs, looking at cancer mortality. This is, um, so that's you know, death from cancer, cancer incidence or new diagnosis, cardiovascular disease composite, uh, stroke, myocardial infarct, and vascular death. 
So these hazard ratios between the longest telomeres and the shortest telomeres are sometimes factors of, of three to, to tenfold increased risk of uh, disease or mortality. So uh, we believe if you don't measure it, it's hard to control it. And we're looking at uh, saliva-based telomere length measurements. Um, it's based on the Cawthon QPCR assay technology, and we have the exclusive uh, license to, to that technology uh, for telomere length measurement and other repetitive sequences. Uh, the output of the QPCR assay is basically a relative telomere length where the telomere amplicon, amplicon signal is normalized to a single uh, copy gene signal. Uh, but then we, we're developing standards that will let, enable us to give a very accurate telomere length in kilobase pairs. Right now, the field is, is lacking a good uh, absolute accuracy standard. Uh, the assay is, is uh, easily scalable. It's high throughput, uh, low cost compared to other technologies, and the vast majority of studies that have shown the clinical utility of um, telomere length measurements are, are based on this qPCR assay. So I'll just show um, a portion of the test report which uh, illustrates what we hope people will do in, in terms of uh, monitoring telomere length. So this hypothetical individual would have had a baseline 6, 12, and 18-month measurements, and you can track where uh, you are relative to uh, a healthy Bay Area norms population. So we established a large uh, norms population of over 500 uh, subjects. We looked at telomere length at baseline 6 and 12 months to get a feel for the normal rate of change, uh, but this population allows us to uh, uh, give individuals uh, a percentile score based upon uh, where they are relative to that fixed population. So in this case, uh, this person uh, at, at their most recent measurement were, was right about the 50th percentile. And in the long run, we think rate of change in telomere length may actually be more clinically useful than a, a single telomere length measurement. There's some evidence that does show that people with accelerated telomere loss, so looking at the rate of change in telomere length, are at higher risk of disease or mortality. So why saliva? Uh, it's mainly the, all of the factors that make it convenient. It's uh, non-invasive, um, uh, very convenient collection, high yield of highly stable DNA years at, at room temperature. Uh, the majority of human cells in saliva are actually white blood cells, there's a large number of neutrophils as it turns out, and most of the clinical studies have been done on blood, so the, the, the fact that we're looking at immune cells in saliva, which is where DNA comes from in a blood sample, uh, we believe that there's going to be good uh, clinical utility of uh, saliva telomere length measurements. And in fact, there's a good correlation between telomere length in blood and telomere length in saliva from the same individuals. There was a large 100,000 subject study done by Kaiser in collaboration with UCSF, which was exclusively saliva. And the lifestyle mortality similar, and other associations were very similar to those seen in, in the blood studies. And there's a growing number of large epidemiological studies now, uh, prospective studies using saliva. So some in interesting observations. It, uh, saliva, of course, is a non-sterile uh, substance. In the oral cavity, there, there is bacteria, a variety of different microbes, but it turns out that's not an interfering substance. Um, we uh, uh, experimentally altered the uh, cellular composition of saliva from 0% uh, bacterial DNA up to 96%, uh, and as you can see, for a variety of different standards in our tests or quality controls, there was uh, very little impact of, of um, bacterial DNA presence. So that was good news. Uh, but interestingly, we found that the level of human genomic DNA in a sample is dependent upon the abundance of bacterial DNA. And it turns out that the neutrophils in saliva do have uh, superoxide burst capacity, so they have antimicrobial function. And what we think is that the presence of uh, bacteria likely through signaling recruits immune cells into the oral cavity. So slightly dirty spit is actually preferred over very clean spit. And uh, what, what we are recommending our subjects do is to uh, have a morning spit uh, after uh, the previous night brushing of the teeth. Uh, we also did a small study just um, looking at whether or not 
it, well, we know high molecular weight DNA is stable in the, in the genotech stabilizing solution, but we didn't know whether the telomere DNA specifically would be stable. And so we extracted DNA from uh, the same subject uh, collected in uh, late 2011 and then took another aliquot uh, 15 months later and extracted it. And there was very good, you can uh, see the, the early time point and the late time point uh, correlates uh, very well across the, the 16 subjects. And we foresee a time when the physician might uh, say you're 52, but your telo age is actually 64. We're going to try to get it down a bit. Thank you very much.